Welcome back to Spork Syndicate. My name is Tom. Today is the monthly Four Horsemen Invitational, and we're going to have some fun. But right out the gate, let's get that mistake out of the way. I pre-drilled all of my Four Horsemen builds for the first half of the year, and then drilled right into a screw. Ruined my titanium bit. <laughs> Dummy. So the invitational challenge is to take this Hot Wheels Range Rover and make it a safari vehicle. First, I was going to do this zebra striping and, uh, you know, do the kind of thing you would see at the zoo. But something struck me. What if the safari and, and the planes were not littered with animals? but zombies. And that's what I went for on this one. A safari for zombies. Maybe to study them, maybe just to herd them, or what have you. So I found this Matchbox Jurassic Park six-wheeler. I think it had a really good chassis. I know the scales were different, but I got the jewelry saw out and started cutting. And then I had an open back, and I figured that's where the passengers would go. Now, the fun thing about making a Gaslander or a Mad Max or a Wastelander, it's the kind of thing you're going to build with the available parts you have. I don't have a 3D printer, and um, I do have a lot of castings and pieces, and I, I like experimenting. And, of course, I'm an avid viewer of all the diecast customizer channels I can find on YouTube and Instagram. And I just try to invent things. And in this case, I figured, okay, a rugged suspension and three axles, but let's make sure it's functional, make sure the armor's in place. So here I'm just trying to get everything fit. The glue is sticking, you know, making sure I get some JB Weld in there, fill in the gaps, all of that stuff. And I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far. It all is close to coming together. And all right, I got at least one screw in there. Now I come back to the part where I want a little more of the Range Rover in there. At this point, I've got the interior, I've got the windshield, and of course I've got the, uh, the hood and the front fenders and the doors. But the rest of this is mostly the Matchbox. And I did want to get that iconic sloped back roof in there, and that meant getting it on top. That would be the viewing portion. It, it takes a little while here. Uh, I do some experimenting and, and inventing and building. And that's the fun thing about a Gaslander or anything. I mean, this is why I like to put multiple engines and extra axles and have all that fun with these cars. And that's what makes these builds so fun. Just going and being creative with it. And it, so I came across this back end. It looks like it's there to hold Velociraptors, but it's supposed to hold passengers. So I have to build it kind of like a platform. Although this one will end up being repurposed later on in its lifespan as we deepen the story. And that's another thing I like is the story of the vehicles. It's, it's like a, an unwritten rule with the gas landers and wasteland vehicles. They have to have a story. They're part of an identity. They're their own character. And this one's no different. I'll explain why I call it Moses later. But right now, I'm just trying to get the functionality figure out where all the pieces come together, how I can get the roof on there. I'm concerned about the higher center of gravity. Uh, I flirted with the idea of expanding the axles. I only went like one glass bead wider on the axles themselves. Uh, I was thinking about jacking it up a little higher, but then um, I think time constraints and I just didn't want to have too much scope creep. So here's where I had to go back and forth, trying to figure out a way to mount the roof in a way that works. This casting had a closed back end, kind of like a van or, you know, just more of a utility vehicle. So I had to cut and fashion, and then I had to build new um, A pillars for the removed roof and also mount it. And I couldn't find the best way to mount it. And then finally, I just put some platformed styrene up there and everything started to fall into place and look very much like a yacht.
During this build, my wife asked me to fix this little caddy that she wanted uh, one section taken out and it had this great fencing on it, sort of metal lattice work. And if you twist it right, it looks like it's concertina wire at this scale. And I had a lot of fun with that. So I'm putting the fencing protection. You can see through it, you know, whether you're taking pictures or maybe giving injections or taking samples from zombie herds, because that's what this vehicle is built to do. And that again is coming back to why I call it Moses. And this is where my writer's life comes in. You have to kill your darlings. Part of the roll cage from that fire vehicle that I used was working out great on the front, but I could not fit it on the back. It was two different castings and it was too narrow. Uh, eventually I go to clip it and you know, and then I'm like, where can I put it? Maybe I can mount it over the wheels as protection. And then I thought, no, these wheels are gonna be made of something stronger than rubber. They're gonna be like razors. So that's not the place for it. So I had to cast it aside and kill the darling. I went with my favorite color, matte black for the base coat. And in this shot, I'm trying to show you what it's going to look like. Jim Silva recently posted a really cool trick for making camo, and that's using modeling clay. So I took a page from him, but I was trying to make this digital camouflage. In hindsight, I would have used tape because I needed sharper edges. I ended up doing workarounds to it, but the clay ended up inspiring me a little more on the story of this vehicle. So the clay came off in chunks and as I said, I should have used tape, but those chunks of clay look like zombie meat, and that worked. So this is the part where I do too much. I'm dirtying it up and aging it, and that's a fun, fun, fun thing to do. But I still haven't learned the final result of milling oil. I love that stuff, but I have to use it sparingly. I think it comes in such a small container for a reason. So I'm dirtying things up, I'm aging them. I'm not trying to make it look rusty, but this is the process. It's like when you build it. Oh yeah, those are most definitely zombie intestine. The saw and the claw up front clear things and that's where the name comes from. I use more clay throughout and then I give it a signifying red paint, which I then knock down with some brown and some milling oil and it's mead and viscera, and this is where the name Moses comes from. It parts the Red Sea. See, this vehicle, it's a zombie herd clearer. I wanted to think that maybe the claw in the front was to grab zombies and hold them up, maybe retrieve them if they have a serum or something like that, but really it's just to snip, clip, cut, slice, dice with the machine guns up front, people with machine guns in the back, just to clear a path. Yee. This is where we started. This, like all the Four Horsemen builds, are always so much fun. So let's recap the journey. <laughs> so 
Thanks again to the Four Horsemen for this very inspirational and creative build. For Spork Syndicate, this is Tom. I'll see you again real soon.